God is often depicted not only as person-like, but as anthropomorphic or human-like. When we hear the word God, we tend to imagine a deity who is a person with human characteristics. For example, God is a father. God can also be a mother. God is a ruler. Not just any ruler, but our Lord. God can also be our lover. Like us, God also acts, has plans and intentions, and so forth. As a result of symbolizing God in these personal ways, it is easier to have a relationship with God. It is relatively easy to relate to a divine father or mother, but it's very difficult to relate to what is utterly transcendent. One of the possible issues with this, however, is that we can end up taking all of this too literally, and God the Creator can become another creature like us. So, concisely stated, in making God too imminent, too relatable, too personal and human, God can lose his transcendence and cease to be God anymore. As a symbol for the ultimate, the Buddha faces the opposite challenge that God faces. The Buddha was not a God, but was an ordinary human being, just like you and me. And like the Buddha, you and I also have the potential to spiritually wake up. So unlike a transcendent God, the historical Buddha was literally a human person who we naturally relate to. The challenge is that over time, the Buddha has also been depicted in superhuman and even godlike ways. For example, some believe he can instantaneously travel anywhere, that he knows all the past lives and future reincarnations of all beings, that he can read minds and is clairvoyant, and so forth. A potential concern with this is that the more superhuman and godlike the Buddha becomes, the less relatable he is, and the less attainable enlightenment seems to be for you and me. So, whereas if God becomes too personal, he can lose his transcendence and cease to be God anymore, if the Buddha becomes too godlike, he can lose his humanness and cease to be a relatable human Buddha anymore.